Michael, thanks for taking the time to talk about all things generative AI and how Poly AI is innovating here. So just to level set, maybe, can you start off at uh, explaining what Poly AI uh, is doing and uh, what your customers are able to do with it? Yeah, absolutely. So at Poly AI, we make customer-led voice assistants for enterprise customer service. Nice. So um, we see ourselves as a fairly specialist provider applying large language models, generative AI, but specifically to spoken conversations that happen over the phone. And the use case we found is um, in the enterprise contact center. Nice. Right? Um, so uh, that's really where uh, we focus. We, uh, we, we're fairly cross-sector. You know, we, we work across travel hospitality is big for us, retail, utilities, financial services. Um, and you know, our voice AI help answer account management questions, nice. um, schedule deliveries, um, you know, do um, price matching in a retail environment. Because of our focus on the enterprise, we realize how important it is to be able to uh, customize right, to each yeah. enterprise's needs. So we work um, as part of our deployment methodology with each enterprise to create the voice that they want representing them over yeah. the over the phone. Yeah. Um, you know, connect that to their um, different business processes, um, get the tonality right, the personality, yeah. get the pace of speech right as well. So yeah. in some sectors, you know, if they are serving an older demographic, yeah. you need to be able to cater for that scenario yeah. in the pace of the voice assistant. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's absolutely where um, we focus in our delivery. Mm -hmm. um, a couple of our clients with Amazon Connect already, for example, are like City of Amsterdam in Europe. Oh, uh, nice. We're doing bilingual English and Dutch um, for, for the client there. Nice. Mm -hmm. um, and in the US, um, Hop, a travel booking platform, yeah. um, as well a, a joint with Amazon Connect customer. As well. Can you share a little bit about your experiences of training these generative uh, text-to-speech models? Uh, how did you go about it? I know your team actually partnered with us on building on SageMakers. Uh, can you share some of our experiences? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, you know, we're, we're really fortunate. Our co-founders, you know, they were complete their PhDs in these technologies out of Cambridge, right? So they, um, they, they, they have a wide network, a wide yeah. expertise in this space. And yeah, we, we absolutely work with SageMaker on um, training our next version of so voice cloning, voice synthesis algorithms mm -hmm. um, that allow, you know, we're going for also zero shots applications, right? Again, enhancing the ability for the enterprise to be able to bring their own brand personality mm. um, in that voice cloning process, right? Yeah. The way that we do that differently is, again, we want to focus on this technology for um, phone-based conversations, right? Which yeah. is why we see value in, in um, still enhancing our own training and doing that um, you know, in conjunction with AWS on, on SageMaker. Yeah. Where do you see the future of something like inference? Do you find it uh, like uh, you will make these models available as a serverless API in platforms like Bedrock, or how do you see this playing out? Yeah, I think it's something that we're definitely uh, exploring, right? Again, uh, we're now accumulating a fairly unique data set of what yes. customer service conversations are like in an enterprise yeah. environment, which we believe is unique, right? Yeah. Which is uh, potentially a, an interesting um, play for us as we think about Bedrock, yeah. right? At the same time, we're excited to be um, users of Bedrock ourselves, right? You know, yeah. the, uh, as we deploy these solutions, definitely the most frequent question we get is around guard railing, is oh, yeah. around how do you create more controllability, interpretability in these yeah. models? What are the different methods of guard railing? Yeah. Uh, and uh, there's absolutely immense value for us to work with you know, an ent enterprise grade player like AWS, right? Yeah. And, and to be able to say, hey, you know, we work with, with Bedrock on these guardrails. And, That's awesome. Yeah. How do you think about uh, uh, responsible AI practices in uh, areas like uh, with generative model and speeches? Uh, what are some of the things? Uh, how do you approach the problem from a policy perspective and technology perspective? Uh, it's a great question, right? Where um, we still consider ourselves a, a young company, a growing company. We're, we're looking to players like AWS, like Anthropic, right? Um, for some of that guidance, um, I guess in our use case, right, we're dealing with customer support phone calls, right? Yeah. So the things that are relevant for us uh, is this question of, you know, do you need to declare upfront whether yeah. you're an AI solution or not, right? Um, yeah. In the absence of regulation. Uh, we leave that to really the enterprise to decide what they're comfortable with yeah. um, in, in terms of that solution. Michael, thanks again, actually, for uh, 
coming and uh, answering some of these questions. I'm pretty sure the future model builders uh, in Gen AI are going to be really inspired by some of your learnings as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Mm -hmm.